So we're talking about gear trains. Um, I'm going to draw a simplified gear train to illustrate a certain point. We've got, say, a spindle gear, a gear on the end of the spindle. That's the one that's in the opposite end of the chuck on the back of the lathe, and it's uh, typically got 24 teeth on it. And then you might have a large wheel here, and it'll say any on it, any number of teeth. And uh, then you've got another another gear wheel here driving the lead screw. And we want to know how fast the lead screw is turning, basically. Um, it, and it may have 24 teeth on it as well. Um, so why does this one say any? Well, it's, it's sitting on a shaft that's not connected to anything, so it's really not doing anything, and the RPM of that wheel doesn't really have any effect. Um, However, this one's connected to the chuck and this one's connected to the lead screw, so they are important. So um, let's say we put an 80 tooth gear in here. Uh, what effect is that going to have? Well, you've got the, your um, RPM from the spindle, uh, I'll call that RS, and we want to figure out um, what effect it's going to have on the lead screw. Actually, I'm going to put uh, LS here for lead screw, and that's equal to are of the spindle multiplied by the gear ratios. So this big wheel is going to be, since it's got 80 teeth on it, and that one's only got 24, it's going to be turning more slowly. So you want a ratio that's smaller than one, so the ratio will be 24 over 80. So you multiply your spindle speed by 24 over 80, and that'll give you the RPM of this wheel. Uh, it's, it's not doing much, but it's driving this one here, and the speed of this wheel will be faster than the 80 speed wheel, so it'll be uh, 80 over 24 ratio. So you multiply that by 80 over 24. And that'll give you the RPM at this point here on, this, on the lead screw spindle. But as you can see, of course, these numbers all cancel out. 24's cancel, the 80's cancel, and you're just left with RS. So this whole gear train is a one-to-one -one ratio, so your lead screw is going to be turning at the same RPM as your spindle. Because these 80s cancel, of course, you could have any number of teeth on here and they'd always cancel. That's an important point, that uh, that's why these either wheels don't really do anything. And you can ignore them in your gear train. This whole uh, same principle applies to the reversing gear. Say you've got a spindle gear running at 24, and it's driving a pair of gears which are used for reversing. Uh, on my lathe, that's a 32 tooth gear on here, and there's another 32 tooth gear here, uh, and they're connected together on a plate. And you've got a, a lever out here to, to, to move it. Um, and then that drives um, a little shaft called the uh, reversing stud gear shaft, and this has another little gear on it, and that's got 24 teeth as well. So the same principle here applies, we've got 24 driving a 32, this 32 tooth is on a shaft that doesn't connect to anything, and so it has no impact, so this could be any number of teeth, and it's driving another one that's 24, so the RPM at the base of the start gear is the same as the RPM of the, of the spindle, so you've got your spindle here, and your start gear here. Now the start gear is a compound gear which means there are two gears that are bolted together or riveted together on a key. Actually, in this case, it's on a key because you can change the outer wheel. Uh, so you have another gear wheel sitting on top of that here. And you can vary the number of teeth on the stud gear, and it will have an effect because of the fact that this, this small gear is driving a bigger wheel um, or a different size wheel. So say, for example, we put a 40 tooth gear on here, um, and then it drives a um, idler wheel, which can be any, we can ignore that really, and then it goes on to your lead screw gear. And so the lead screw gears are interchangeable as well, and it is, it, it is important because it's connected to the lead screw shaft, as we talked about before. Um, so if we put, a 24 here, 24 there. This is going to be the stud gear, remember, is turning at the same speed as the main spindle. We've got a 40 tooth gear here. Um, so the RPM at the lead screw in this case is going to be RLS equals R spindle 
time swap ratios. Well, this bigger wheel is going to be sending teeth past at a faster rate than the smaller one. Um, so you're going to multiply by rate, a big ratio, 40 over 24. Describing this one here. Now, what, another way I like to look at this with these uh, idle wheels is if you think of the number of teeth per minute that are going past this point, it's going to be the same as the number of teeth per minute going past that point. And that's why it doesn't have any impact on the on their final results. So we can ignore that wheel. If this is 24 again here, um, and you've got 40 there, the small wheel is going to be faster than the large wheel. So you're going to need a ratio that's bigger than one. So you go 40 over 24. And um, just for completeness, I put in an 80 tooth gear in here instead of any. So. Um, now we'll complete this calculation. Um, you, can, you can actually leave, that, leave those 80s out. So your RPM of the lead screw is the RPM of the spindle, of the uh, spindle, that's right, multiplied by 40 over 24, multiplied by 40 over 24 again, and that comes to 1600 over 576, giving a ratio of 2.77. So we'll simply start with um, the stud gear. Uh, which we know is turning at the same RPM, the stud gear RPM is the same as the RPM of the spindle. That drives a gear usual labeled any, and as we decided before, that doesn't do anything, and is connected then to the lead screw, lead screw gear. The important things are the number of teeth on the stud gear, and the number of teeth on the lead screw. So the ratio of the speed of the lead screw will be the ratio between these numbers of teeth. So the RPM of the lead screw is the equal to the RPM of the spindle times the number of teeth on the spindle over the number of teeth on the lead screw. So a typical setup for a um, Imperial lathe, according to the Oxford manuals, is to have a 20 tooth gear here and a 56 tooth gear here. So the, in that case, the RPM of the lead screw is going to be TS20 over LS56. If I divide top and bottom by two, that's 10 over 28 ratio of 1 over 2.8. Now that might seem like a, a kind of random number but it's actually a, an interesting fact uh, that that's the standard setup um, and uh, we then have to look at what happens when this um, gets fed into the lead screw gearbox. So that's a whole another issue. So let's uh, cross this whole thing out just remember this ratio of 1 to 2.8. So um, R of the lead screw equals R S times one over two point eight. And I've had a look at the gearbox here, and uh, all the ratios given on the plaque. Lever, ones with ABCD on it. That gives ratios that are like 8, 3 per inch, 16, 32, 64, and 128. And then you've got the um, uh, numbered lever, which gives other ratios, and it gives ratios which are in the form of 8, 9, 10, 11.5, 12, 13, 14. And the overall ratio of the gearbox um, is the term of multiplying whatever number you choose on here by this number on here. Those of you who are observant may notice that I've made a mistake here. The row of numbers at the top is labelled lettered 
lever and I've written numbers on it instead of letters. The row at the bottom is labelled numbered lever correctly, but I've written letters on it, so the letters and numbers are reversed. If you look at this old copper plaque here, this gives the imperial settings for the gearbox, and you'll see right in the middle of the plaque is a column with A, A, B, C, D, E on it, and we'll see that A with a 22 stud gear gives a, a feed of 8 threads per inch, and if we go to B it's 16, if we go to C it's 32, D is 64, and E is 128. And if we go across the columns you get these other odd ratios. If we look at the second row here, that is with a stud gear of 20 teeth, we see numbers of 8, 9, 10, 11, 11.5, 11 12, 13 and 14 threads per inch. If we want to be able to multiply the ratio, these ratios by the other ones on the column, we should divide these by 8. So the 8 would become 1, and the second one would be 9 eighths, second one 10 eighths, 11 eighths, 11 and a half eighths, 12 eighths, 13 eighths, and 14 eighths. By the way, when we're looking at this copper plaque here, you'll notice it says a 4.5 inch Boxford lathe. That's because the British used the distance between the centre line and the bed as the definition of the swing of the lathe, but the Americans used the diameter of an object that you can swing, and they'd call that a 9 inch lathe. And these days we've more or less gone over to the American system of using the diameter. So this is now considered a 9 inch lathe. I'll be concentrating on the A1 setting because that's 8 threads per inch and that corresponds with the 8 threads per inch on the lead screw. A 1 to 1 basically overall ratios from the chuck to the, lead, to the lead screw. So the lead screw is moving along at 8 threads per inch. Uh, but the gear train, the standard gear train we've just worked out had a ratio of um, 1 over 2.8. So we have to then have a 2.8 to 1 ratio inside this inside the um, gearbox when it's in the A1 setting. So that's the intrinsic uh, basic uh, gear ratio in the gearbox um, and it's uh, what you would think of as being a 1 to 1 transition through the gearbox has actually got to be a 2.8 to 1 ratio to compensate for the 1 over 2.8 ratio in the gear train. Okay, so in conclusion of, uh, regarding the, the lead screw, we've got the um, basic uh, gear ratio in the lead screw gearbox is 2.8 to 1. Uh, I consider the A1 position to be the primary uh, straight through position, and that's the 2.8 to 1 ratio, which compensa is compensated for by the 1 over 2.8 ratio of the gear train, and so it comes out 1 to 1. And in that setting, the rotation of the lead screw is equal to the rotation of the chuck. And that gives you 8 threads per inch in the A1 setting. And then when you want to use the other gears, uh, you go down with these ratios and, and various amounts according to whatever number of threads per inch you want. But 8, eight threads per inch is, uh, is a primary one in A1. Um, these same ratios, of course, are, are used for the uh, metric conversion. So, um, this is the equation uh, that we finally came up with for the RPM of the lead screw uh, is the RPM of the, of the stud gear or spindle multiplied by the number of teeth on the stud gear divided by the number of teeth on the lead screw times 2.8 which is the ratio from the gearbox in A1 position. Uh, so your standard setup uh, using this equation is your RPM at the lead screw is RPM from this spindle, multiplied by 20 over 56 with the standard gears, multiplied by 2.8, and that gives, this actually calculates to 1, so your lead screw speed after going through the gearbox is equal to the chuck or spindle speed. So, all that comes out 1 to 1, if you use the 20 tooth on the start and 56 on the lead screw. Okay, so we'll erase all that and go to the next stage, which is talking about metric conversions. And uh, remember that stud, that stud gear is turning at the same speed as the chuck. And um, the standard setup was to have 20 teeth on the stud gear, have any number of teeth on here, and driving the uh, lead screw with 56 teeth. 
leaf screw, right? So that's what we've just been talking about. Um, now, when you want to convert to metric, you replace this any wheel with a special compound wheel. This compound wheel has 63 on a smaller wheel and 80 teeth on the larger wheel. There is also a 127 wheel with a 100 wheel. And there is a third option, actually a 47 connected to a 37 wheel. I should also mention that those who have a metric lathe and want to convert back to Imperial use another combination wheel with 127 teeth on one gear and 135 teeth on the other gear. And those who are interested maybe may like to look at the Boxford Users Group. There are members there who are creating combination wheels by 3D printing using various different plastics, and that's very interesting. So it's basically the same setup as the uh, Imperial lathe, except it's got this um, gear ratio in here. Actually, usually what they'll do is replace this one by a 40 tooth gear on the stud. So that'll double the speeds compared to what we have with the uh, Imperial system. Um, now this ratio of uh, 127 to 1 is uh, 127 over 100 equals 1.27 but because we've replaced the, stud, the 22 stud gear by 42 we've got to multiply that by 2 and that comes to 2.54 which is the number of centimetres Per inch. So that gives you your metric conversion. Uh, there's also another uh, option, instead of using the 124, uh, 127 teeth gear wheels, you can use um, an 80 and a 63. And that gives you a very similar sort of conversion. Uh, it's, uh, and it's, it's multiplied by two again because we put a 40 uh, stud gear in there and uh, that comes to 2.53 968 a lot of other numbers and um, that's pretty close to 2.54 and the error in that is very small uh, and that comes to 0.99 0.025 percent. So it's very, very close uh, to giving you a straight metric conversion. Okay, so um, I found a, a textbook uh, that said to use this particular setup for uh, metric conversion in order to have a pitch of four millimeters. So I checked over the calculations and it works. This time they used the state gear of 32 and put in a metric conversion gear with the 127 tooth gear driving a 100 tooth gear and that driving the lead screw with a 56 tooth gear on the lead screw. And I wanted to check that that worked. So we took this equation that we derived earlier uh, where the uh, RPM of the lead screw after going to the gearbox was 2.8 times the RPM of the chuck or, spin or um, stud gear. Um, multiplied by the teeth on the stud gear over the teeth on the lead screw. Um, we get the RPM of the lead screw is 2.8 times 32 over 56. And we also now have to insert the uh, ratio of the um, metric gear change, which is 100 over 127. Uh, it's actually slowing down the RPM because you've got a bigger gear, gear driving a smaller gear. So it's 100 over 127. That gives us a ratio of 1.25984. I um, guess we don't need this in here. Um, with the A1 setting, it says to use the setting for 8 threads per inch, which is A1 on the gearbox. And so then this ratio has got to be divided by 8 to give this. And that's the feed in inches. So we multiply that by 25.4 millimeters per inch, and it comes out to 4 millimeters pitch. So, yes, it worked. So here we have another example uh, where the table on the end of the lathe said to get a 7 millimeter pitch we should use a 56 mm uh, tooth stud gear and a 56 tooth lead screw gear and set the um, gearbox on A1 and so here we can redo our metric conversion we've got uh, the lead screw, lead screw speed 2.8 from the gearbox times 
56 to 56, which is this gear ratio, multiplied by 100 over 127, which is the ratio of the uh, compound gear for the metric conversion. And it gives us 2.20472 uh, RPM as the lead screw speed. It's relative to the chuck speed. Um, so with the A1 setting is 8 threads per inch normally, so you divide that by 8 and you get a pitch of 0.2755 inches and we multiply that by 25.4 and we get exactly 7.000 millimetre pitch. Now is a similar uh, calculation of uh, the gears you need to obtain a 5mm pitch. Uh, the table says to use a 40 stud gear and a 56 on the lead screw and then you've got your conversion gear for metric from 127 to 100 teeth. So that's correct for giving you a 5mm pitch and why did you want to do that? Well the same uh, gear setting is what's used for the table for automatic drive of the uh, cross slide and the longitudinal feed. Five millimeter pitch is equivalent on their table to 1.7 millimeters per turn feed rate. Um, that means that the ratio uh, inside the apron uh, is 0 0.34 that's uh, 1.7 over 5 is 0 0.34 so that's the gear ratio that's applied inside the apron of the car of the carriage in order to provide the longitudinal feed and uh, so the table on the front of the lathe tells you the feed rates not the not the pitch and it, so it shows you a 1.7 millimeter per turn feed rate. Uh, now that's the longitudinal feed rate, um, but the, but the um, cross feed is 0 0.3 of that. So you multiply the, uh, the number on the table uh, by 0.3. So in other words, if it says 1.7 on the table for the longitudinal feed, you multiply that by 0.3 to get the cross feed. So that's how the uh, power feed system works. And they always recommend using the stud gear at 40. And the standard um, leaf screw gear is 56. Actually, if we do that last calculation and multiply 1.7 by 0 0.3, we find it 0 0.5, which happens to be one-tenth of the pitch if you're using the same gears for cutting a thread. So actually, the cross-feed is actually 0 0.1 of the pitch. Putting that another way, if we wanted to have a cross-feed rate of 0 0.7 millimeters per turn, we could set it up for a pitch of 7 millimeters, and from this silver table you can see that that requires a 56 stud wheel size and an A1 setting on the gearbox to get 7 millimeters pitch and a tenth of 7 millimeters is 0 0.7 millimeters per turn on the cross feed. Longitudinal feeds could be calculated the same way uh, but the ratio is 0 0.34 of the pitch which is about a third, so if you divide the um, pitch by three, you'd get a, approximately the uh, longitudinal feed. So if you wanted a longitudinal feed of, say, two millimeters per turn, you could set it up for a pitch of six millimeter pitch, divided by three, that gives two, and that's your longitudinal feed.